Hello everyone, welcome to MSFT webcast. In this video guide, we will configure the DSV failover on Windows Server 2019. DSV failover is a feature on the Windows DSV server to ensure the high availability of DSV service for the enterprise network. The two DSV service in failover relationship share lease information including reservations, scope options, policies and filters. This enables both DHCP servers to provide lease to the same subnet for the load balancing or redundancy purpose. For this demo, we are using the TS lab created in VirtualBox. We have two Windows Server 2019 VM and one Windows 10 client VM. This is our member server with the name WS2K19-SRV02. On this server, already we have installed and configured the DHCP server rule. Let's verify the DSCP server configuration first. To open DSCP management console, we need to click on tools and let's click on DHCP. On DSCP management console, I'm going to expand our server name which is ws2k19-srv02.mylab.local Expand IP version 4 and here you can see we have a one active DHCP scope with the name building1 and if you click on address pool, you can verify that start IP address is there 172.18.72.15 to 172.18.72.253. These are the available IPs to assign DSCP clients. After seeing the configuration of existing DSCP server, now let's start the DSCP failover configuration. For this demo, we are going to use our domain controller as a second DSCP server. If you have additional member server, you can use that server as a partner DHCP server for DHCP failover. First, we need to install and configure DHCP server rule on our domain controller. Let's move to our domain controller. This is our domain controller with the host name ws2k19-dc01. Let's click on manage and select add rules and features. On before you begin screen, we need to click on next button. Select rule base or feature base installation and click on next. Already our local server is selected and that is WS2K19-DC01. Click on next. On select server rules, I am going to select DHCP server. Click on add features to add required features for DHCP server. Click on next. Next again. Here you can read brief overview information about DHCP. Click on next. And click on install to start the installation process. After the successful installation of DSCP server rule, we need to complete the DSCP configuration as well. For that, I am going to click on this link to launch DSCP post install configuration wizard. Click on next. Already on this server, we have login as a domain admin. So our credential is there mylab slash administrator. We are going to use this credential to authorize this DSCP server in our active directory domain mylab.local. Let's click on commit. Let's click on close. And let's close this console as well. Let's click on tools. And click on DHCP. As we are going to open DHCP management console. And uh, let's expand our server name. Which is ws2k19-dc01. Expand IP version 4. And here we can confirm that we don't have any DHCP scope on our domain controller. Now I am going to close this console. We are going to configure DHCP failover configuration on our member server. So let's go back to our member server. And I'm going to right click on uh, scope. You can right click on IP version 4 or you can right click on your existing DHCP scope to enable DHCP failover. For this demo, I'm going to right click on our DHCP scope name building 1. Here we have our options to configure a failover. Let's click on configure failover. Select the scope on which you want to enable DHCP failover. By default, select all options is selected. That means it is going to configure DHCP failover for all available scopes on your DHCP server. For this video, we have only one DHCP scope on our DHCP server and that is listed here. Let's click on next. On this console, type the host name or IP address of the partner DHCP server. For that, we need to click on this Add Server button. Let's browse the computer account of our domain controller 
because on which we have installed DHCP service. For that, we need to click on Browse button, click on Advance, and click on Find Now. Here, this is the computer account of our domain controller WS2K19-DC01. Let's select it and click on OK. Click on OK again and click on OK. Now we can see WS2K19-DC01.mylab.local is listed as a partner DHCP server. Click on Next. On this console, you need to change the settings as per your requirement like DHCP failover mode, enable message authentication, etc. There are two modes for DHCP failover, which are hot standby and load balance. And as you can see, under mode, by default, load balance mode is selected. In hot standby mode, primary and secondary DHCP servers works in active passive modes. Primary DHCP server is used to be an active DHCP server and it has the responsibility of leasing out IP address configuration to client computers while secondary DHCP server is used to be a passive server. It takes responsibility of leasing out IP address configuration only when an active DHCP server is down or unavailable. In load balance mode, both DHCP servers works in active active mode and provide an IP address configuration to client computers simultaneously. The client requests are load balance and shared among two DHCP servers. By default, load balance mode is selected and that we can confirm from this console. Under relationship name, you can specify the name of your DHCP's failover relationship. For this demo, I am giving name MyLab failover relationship. Next, we have a maximum client lead time. Maximum client lead time defines the temporary lease period given by the failover server to new DHCP clients. You can set up this time interval as per your requirement. We are going to use the default one and which is one hour. Under mode, if you click on this drop down menu, from this menu, you can select the mode hot standby. But for this video, we are going to use a load balance mode. Here we have a load balance percentage for local server and a partner server. You can adjust this percentage based on your requirement. For example, we are going to use a 70-30. Perfect. Now, the local server holds a 70% of total IP address and remaining 30% IP address will be assigned to partner server. Here we have options to select a state switchover interval as well. And if you want to enable message authentication between both DHCP server, then you need to assign a password here as well. But we are not going to do that. And that's why I'm going to clear this checkbox for enable message authentication. Once you define all the settings, then after you need to click on this next button. Review the configuration settings, which we have selected like relationship name, maximum client lead time, mode and state switch over interval as well as load balance percentage, which is 70-30 in our case. Now we need to click on this finish button to complete the process of configuring DHCP failover. Perfect, we are receiving message that everything went successful. Let's click on close to close this console. Now I'm going to click on this refresh button. After completing DHCP failover settings, it's time to test DHCP failover settings. But before we do that, let me show you something as well. Let's right click on our existing DHCP scope. And this time we have a total three options, deconfigure failover, replicate scope and replicate a relationship. Earlier we had only one options and that is configure a failover. Let's click on properties and let's click on failover tab. You can see the relationship name is there, partner server information is there, that is ws2k19-dc01.mylab.local in our case. Mode is mentioned here and that is load balance mode, maximum client lead time, all the informations are there which we have specified during the configuration process. Let's click on OK. Let's go back to our other DHCP server, which we have installed on our domain controller. Let's click on Tools. And let's open DHCP Management Console. Let's maximize the console. Let's expand our server name, expand IP version 4. And here we can see we have a same DHCP scope 
which we have created on our member server. If we expand and if you click on address pool, you can see we have a same IP address range which we have configured on our member DHCP server which is 172.18.72.15 to 172.18.72.253. To test a DHCP failover configuration, let's go to our Windows 10 client PC. This is our Windows 10 client computer and on this computer, currently we have assigned the static IP address. So let's change the IP address to dynamic. Let's press Windows R key, type mcpa.cpl and press enter key. Let's right click on our Ethernet adapter and select properties. Click on Internet Protocol version 4 and again click on properties. Let's select radio button, obtain an IP address automatically and do the same for DNS server address as well. Click on OK and click on close. Perfect. We have successfully got an IP address from our DHCP server. But we are more interested about the IP address of our DHCP server. Let's press Windows R key, type CMD and press Enter key. At command prompt, I'm going to type command ipconfig slash all. Let's press Enter key. And as you can see, our client computer got an IP address 172.18.72.182 from our DHCP server. And currently, the DHCP server with the IP address 172.18.72.5 is assigning the IP address to this Windows 10 client computer. As we have used load balance mode and that's why our second DHCP server is also assigning IP address to our DHCP clients as well. To test DHCP failover settings properly, I'm going to stop DHCP service on our domain controller. Let's go to our domain controller. Let's right click on our server name. Click on all task and select a stop. Perfect. Now let's again move to a Windows 10 client PC and let's run command ipconfig slash release. Let's press enter key and let's try to renew the IP address again by running command ipconfig slash renew. Let's press enter key. And as you can see instantly a Windows 10 PC gets an IP address 172.18.72.182 but let's confirm which DHCP server is assigning this IP address. Let's again run command ipconfig slash all and here we can confirm the IP address of our DHCP server which is 172.18.72.7 that means a member server is assigning the same IP address to our DHCP clients which was earlier assigned by our domain controller. After seeing this result, we can say we have successfully configured DHCP failover settings in Windows Server 2019. That's it for this video guide. Thank you all for watching this video on how to configure DHCP failover in Windows Server 2019.